This is the 2020 Amy 2, number nine. We're gonna solve this with complementary counting and the principle of inclusion and exclusion, or PIE. So our um, complementary counting, we're gonna count the number of ways um, or the number of arrangements um, in which one pair is still adjacent or at least one pair is still adjacent. So this is what we don't want. So, um, and the way pi works is we're gonna calculate the number of ways where at least one pair is still adjacent, acknowledging that we are over counting the number of ways where at least two pairs are adjacent. And we'll, we'll describe this a little bit specifically when we get to the problem. Um, we'll need to add back the number of ways where at least three pairs are adjacent. We'll subtract the number of ways where at least four pairs are adjacent. And finally, we can have as many as five pairs adjacent. So we will add that back in at the very end. So let's take a look where, where we count the number of ways where after the rearrangement, at least one pair of people are still, um, are still adjacent to each other, which is what we don't want. So, um, we can begin by picking which um, which pair or how many ways that are, there are choosing a pair which before and after the rearrangement or intermission or whatever it is, uh, they are, are still adjacent. So we could pick AB or BC, CD, DE or EF. So we have um, five choices for the pair that still remains adjacent to each other. We can tr treat that pair as a block for counting purposes and our arrangements, and then C, D, E, and F. This gives us five factorial ways to arrange um, our block, our pair, and then our, our four individuals. Um, a, B can be in reversed order, so it could also be B, A, and they'll still be adjacent. So this is um, when we multiply all these, five times five factorial times two, this is the number of ways where we will have at least one pair adjacent to each other. When we count the number of ways of having at least two pairs adjacent to each other, we'll see that this is how this is an overcounting. So let's count the number of ways where at least two pairs are adjacent to each other. There's two ways where this could happen. We could have um, non overlapping pairs. So for example, we could have our two pairs that are still adjacent to each other um, be A, B, and C, D. And so let's, let's just count this for a second. So the number of ways of choosing two non-overlapping pairs, we could have A, B, and C, D, A, B, and D, E, A, B, and E, F. And we could have B, C, and D, E, B, C, and E, F, and we could have C, D, and E, F. So here are our ways of choosing two pairs where ne neither of the pairs shares a, a person in common. And there are six ways of doing that. If we treat each of our um, pairs, C, D, and then E, F, as a block, there are four factorial ways of arranging these. A, B can be in reverse order and C, D can also be in reverse order and still be adjacent to each other. So this is six times four factorial times two squared, which is 576. Let's take a moment again to, to discuss how the, this overcounting occurs. So when I count the number of ways in this first case of one pair, still being adjacent to each other after intermission. Um, I'm also counting um, the number of ways that A, B, and C, D are adjacent to each other. But I also count that same A, B, C, D two pair adjacent to each other when I count the number of ways that C, D can be adjacent to each other after intermission. So I'm, I'm double counting that A, B, C, D pair um, this first time here and again, when I count the number of ways that CD can be adjacent. So this is basically the, the principle of inclusion and exclusion. And it's why I'm going to subtract um, two pairs because I've, I've counted each of these twice. Now, there's another way 
that our overlapping pairs can be, um, uh, th there's another way that our, our two pairs uh, can remain adjacent and that's um, if they are overlapping. So we could have overlapping pairs. And by that, I mean, an example would be um, one pair is AB and the other pair is BC. So we see they, they overlap, they, B is um, in both pairs. So let's count um, the number of ways that we can have uh, these sort of overlapping pairs or triplets, A, B, C, C, D, E, D, E, and F. No, I missed one, B, C, D. Okay, so we have four ways here. So we can treat that block of triplets as, as one unit, and then we can rearrange it with our three other, uh, three other people, and we can rearrange that order, and then this is four factorial. So altogether, the number of ways of doing this is four times four factorial times two, which is 192. Together, two pairs, where we have at least two pairs together, um, is 576 plus 192 or 768. Okay, let's move along and count the number of ways that we could have at least three pairs adjacent. And we're going to add this back in because our three pairs adjacent could occur simultaneously with the previous calculation. So we need to subtract that. Now let's start with all three pairs are overlapping. So this might be um, for example, A, B, B, C, and C, D are three pairs that are still adjacent to each other after intermission. So let's count first the number of ways that we can choose our three overlapping pairs, A, B, C, D, B, C, D, E, and C, D, E, F. So that's three ways. We can treat this foursome as a block. They can be in either order, A, B, C, D, or D, C, B, A, and they'll still be adjacent. And then now we're left with two more individuals that can go anywhere. So that's three factorial ways to arrange. So that's three times three factorial times two is 36. Okay. Uh, we can also have uh, two pairs that um, overlap and uh, one more pair. So this might look something like uh, A, B, B, C. Those are two pairs that overlap. And then um, something like D and E. So let's list this out. We could have our, our overlapping pairs B, A, B, C, and then D, E, A, B, C, and E, F, B, C, D, and E, F, C, D, E, and A, B, D, E, F, and A, B, uh, D, E, F, and B, C. Whew. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's six ways of choosing um, two overlapping pairs and one more pair that doesn't overlap. So we have our triplet here and our additional pair here, and then we have one more person. So that's three factorial arrangements. These guys can be in reverse order and these can be in reverse order. So our total number is six times three factorial times two squared, which is 144. And our final case with um, at least three pairs is um, they could be um, three non-overlapping. There's only one way of doing this. We have A, B, and, oops, sorry, C, D, and E, F. So just one way to choose them. We treat this as a block, and this as a block. Each of these blocks can be in reverse order. And there's three factorial arrangements. So we have one times three factorial times two cubed, which is 48. All right, so for three pairs, the number, or at least three pairs, the number of arrangements is 36 plus 144 plus 48. 
which is equal to 228. Let's go to over here. Greater than or equal to four pairs still adjacent after um, after intermission. So let's start with them all overlapping. So for example, that would be A, B, B and C, C and D, and D and E. So two ways of choosing our all overlapping pairs, A, B, C, D, E, and B, C, D, E, F. That's two. And C, D, e, we could treat this as a block with our sixth person. And there's two ways to uh, arrange that. We can go forwards or a, B, C, D, E could reverse order and they'd sit in order E, D, C, B, A. So we have two cubed or eight. All right, now we could have uh, three of our four pairs overlap and one no overlap. So this might look like something like um, A, B, B, C, and C, D, and then our last non-overlapping pair is E, F, and E, C, D, and E, F, or we could have A, B, and C, D, E, F, just two. Okay, rearrange, two, this gives us two to the fourth or 16. Finally, we have two pairs overlap for a triplet, and then, oh, another triplet, two pairs overlap. Otherwise, we run out of people. So it could be something like A, B, and B, C, and then C, D, and no, D, E, and E, F. So two pairs overlapping. And there's only one way of doing this, A, B, C, and D, E, F. So we just have one. And then our rearrangements, there's two rearrangements of block A, B, C, and D, E, F. This can be in reverse order. This can also be in reverse order. Two cubed is eight. All together, with at least four pairs, that is 32. Wait, three, 32 rearrangements that we don't want. Finally, uh, our last case is at least five pairs. Actually, we can have only five pairs, as many as five pairs, so it's five pairs. And um, the only way to do this is if they all overlap. So it would look something like A, B is still together, B, C, C, D, D, E, and E, F, B, B, C, D, E, F. That's just one way of choosing them. And there's just one way of arranging them because there are no other blocks there, but we can rearrange them in reverse order. So just to zoom out a bit here. Okay, so we are using the principle of inclusion and exclusion to count the number of, of ways that we don't want our people to sit together when they return to their chairs. So we start with 1,200, which is the number of ways where at least one pair is still sitting next to each other, but then we double count the number of ways where two of them are sitting next to each other, so minus 768. We add back in 228, we subtract 32, and we add back two. This comes out to 630 arrangements that we don't want. The total number of rearrangements, and interestingly, this includes um, one of the rearrangements we have is where each of the people comes back to their original seat. We also don't want that. So uh, the total number of ways, possible ways, that they could come back to the seat is six factorial. 630 of them are not allowed. And so we have um, 90 that are allowed.